where we left off in Photoshop. I had just used the magic wand and then I used the select and mask feature of the magic wand, which is a little annoying and not as good as the feathering feature on the lasso. But if you adjust these things slightly, like the radius and the feather and the shifting of edge, you want to do these things very slightly because you'll see how strong this becomes. And then you hit OK, it will alter your magic wand selection. So you will make it usually much kind of softer and smoother. And then if I hit delete, it will erase away in this kind of soft way, which sometimes can be good, but other times not so much, right? So that's an option. I think my better option is to use the one pixel feather and then just to cut it out with my lasso. But I could work between both options. And often you use the magic wand not because it's the absolute best tool to use, but because you just don't want to waste all your time. So let me do that. Use the magic wand, select it. It's a very sharp selection. Go to select and mask. I'm just going to shift the edge forward about 4% and feather it. One full pixel, say OK, and then hit delete. That's a very soft change. Hardly worth it. Let's try that again. Let's shift the radius because you need to have it detect the edge. One pixel. Shift edge in, let's say 9% and then feather it one pixel. So this isn't my favorite tool because this feels very indirect, right? You don't actually see what it does until you've messed with all these settings and it takes a lot of processing power. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Here we go. So there, it softens it in a way that's pretty believable, especially in front of that bright sun and it saves me some time. And it did it everywhere, everywhere that it was selected. So I can continue that here. Ooh, with the layer behind, with the layer behind, I'm just gonna use my 100% soft edge eraser. And actually use 100% to get rid of that hard edge, but then take down the opacity because I got rid of the hard edge and then I can start blending it a little bit because those suns are a little intense. So I'll take a little bit of that background sky. Okay, what does that leave? It leaves these clouds which I think I'll just use my direct eraser for. Oops, wrong layer. It's probably a good idea to lock your layers when you're done with them. So I'm gonna lock that, that background mountain so I don't accidentally erase from it. And I'm just gonna leave the hint of these clouds in there, but get rid of hard edges. Clouds are nice. Atmosphere is nice to building the illusion. Okay, pretty good. So now I've got that layer figured out. Let's lock it. 
I'm going to start erasing these smart layers now. I don't need them anymore. I don't need to go back to them. So anything with the little smart object icon in it, they're turned off. I can delete. I tried trees in multiple positions. I have a lot more than I need. All right. So one last thing I want to do, I want to transform the suns and then push, push them in a little bit. So a little bit more rounded. Yep, that's good. Oh, but what happened here? And then I'm going to need to do a content-aware fill right here. Well, actually, I don't need to. I don't need to worry about it because it's not part of my composition. That's what my guidelines are about. All right, next layer. I'm going to hit Command S, save the work. These are over here. I'll deal with these later. So let's do the painted mountains next. Nope, let's do these rolling hills next. Okay. And I might simplify mine a little bit and not use those painted mountains at all. We'll see. So what do I start with? Always start with le with levels and adjustment layers. So direct adjustments, not adjustment layers. Image adjustments. Start with levels. I need to make sure I don't have a selection active, so I hit Command D. Image adjustments, <laughs> levels. Midtones. Do I want to shift it brighter or darker? I think I want to shift it just a little bit darker, just slightly. It is more in the middle ground, which will have more contrast. Then I go to image adjustments and color balance, and it's mighty yellow and green. So I'm going to shift it away from yellow a little bit, away from green, a little bit towards red, and create my own painted desert. And now I go to hue saturation. I want to see if I want to make any big changes in color. By shifting the hue back and forth, seeing if one makes sense more than the other. It does make sense to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, so let's do like a... Say a negative two. To brighten it maybe a tiny bit. And then to take the saturation down a tiny bit. It's a little intense. Right, I've got that nice cloud barrier. The colors are matching pretty well now. <clears throat> so now I, I'm just going to do it with my stylus and my eraser instead of using magic wand and trying to, to really cut it out. I can just merge them a little more. more. So I'm going to do it with a very low opacity eraser, pretty big. This is the atmosphere. And it's like I'm pushing the clouds around. Figuring out what works. Because I got lots of overlap. I can do that without worrying too much.
my big problem is that my mountain range here stops before my the edge of my image. So what I'm going to do is use this tree as a dividing line and cut that layer and then move it to the edge like so. So that helps fill those gaps. That's pretty nice. Leave it there. And then just use that eraser. Blend in those clouds a little in that sky. Lock it back up. Keep transitioning. Okay, let's lock that. Then decide what I want from these painted hills. Start with levels. This I'm actually going to increase the contrast a, a little bit. So if you see that the histogram is pinched, you can actually push up the highlights and the increase the contrast. But your biggest decisions are going to be made in that mid-tone slider. Now I go to color, color balance, and add a lot more yellow, a lot more sight. Well, let's see, I'm not quite sure. I have to play with it. I like the sliders because you can go either way and you see what it's doing and you get to decide what's effective. Yeah, that, that seems to work. And then I can go to hue saturation. I think I just want to saturate it slightly. And shift the hue a little bit. Yeah, that kind of seems to help. Right now I'm just going to go in with my lasso with a one pixel feather. Just sweep the top of that hill. Delete it. See how that looks. And decide if I want to transition it with just the eraser instead. So I can take that selection and kind of move it and then just use my eraser and use that selection as a stencil. Because around the base of it, I, I like this transition here. 